Today, I will share the secret of creating the shortest outline shader ever created. We will create it in only one line of fragment shader code. Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for the likes and positive feedback on my previous video. It really means a lot to me. The outline shader might be one of the most famous shaders of all time. Most outline shaders you will find on the internet will range between 20 to 40 lines of shader code. We, however, take on the challenge to creating one with only a single line of code. And on top of that, it will have an adjustable color and it can be animated to smoothly fade in and out. It's not designed to be used for pixel art, but I will show you that with a minor adjustment, we can solve that problem. All right, let's get shading. Let's start by adding a shader material. Let's say new shader, give it the name of the folder and press create. Now press on the shader, remove everything but the fragment shader and we're ready to go. Let's start by explaining how the shader works. So the way it works is we make use of the partly transparent edges that most characters have. We will interpolate the colors with the colors of the original texture to create that nice outline around our character. Be aware that not all textures have transparent edges. All right, so let's make sure that the filter mode is set to linear. And again, make sure that the animation consists out of separate images. Other than that, we're ready to go. And the best way to start is by creating an outline of the tasks we need to do to create the effect. Because what is an outline shader without creating an outline, right? So above the fragment shader, we see the outline. So first we pick a color and mask it to the shape of the necromancer. Then we blend the color sample and the base texture together. Then we make sure we can fade the border in and out using a uniform. And at last we make sure that we can dynamically change the color of the outline. And again, for the advanced shader wizards that watch my complete 2D shader course, this is the time to try it on your own. For those who are watching that have less experience, let's get shading. So let's start by choosing a color. Let's pick red. For now, let's specify it inside of a vector 4 and give it an alpha channel of 1. Now think about how it will look if we will write this to the color variable. So now the texture is completely red. This is because we set the alpha channel to 1 for all the fragments of the shader. That's not what we want, right? We want a perfect silhouette of our necromancer instead. So to do this, we want to use the mask of the alpha channel and use transparency to clip out the rest. When working with shaders, it's very important to understand the connection between colors and numbers. Try to visualize bright colors as values close to one and darker colors close to black. And if we then use those values inside of the alpha channel, we let them decide what to show and what to hide inside of our texture. Let's apply it to our red color vector. So to do this, we type color alpha. Let's move to the second task, which is basically layering the textures. Let's make sure that the original colors will be displayed as the front layer, and behind it, we will display this red silhouette over here. And for this, we can use the famous mix function. So let's type mix, and then use the color silhouette as first argument, and the color as the second. And then to layer it properly, we're going to use the alpha channel again. This already looks very good, don't you think? The mix function returns the color data in RGBA format based on the third argument of the mix function. Zero returns the value inside of the first argument and one returns it of the second argument. Everything in between will be a mix between the two. All right, time for step three, which is fading in the border instead of hard coding it. Let's start by setting up the progress uniform with the float data type. Let's place it over here. So first type uniform, then the data type, then the uniform name, and then we can specify a hint, which we will range between zero and one. And we will set it to zero as a default. Now let's use it to control the output of the mix function. So the easiest way I found is to swap the first two arguments of the mix function around. So let's grab the color silhouette and place it as second value like this. And then let's apply the progress at the third argument because of course this is what controls the mix function but if we now slide the progress it doesn't really give us what we want think about why this is so the reason for this is that when we multiply the alpha channel with one we get the color value of the second argument of the mix function 
which is the red silhouette. Let's first make sure that we fix it when the progress is one. So let's change the progress to a one instead. So at this point, it's using a regular mask like we just saw. The inner part is white and the outer part is black. But what we want is the opposite. We want the outer part to be white and the inner part to be black. That way, we clip all the red inside of it and only keep the border. Because it's the only part we're really interested in. But how do we get this inverted mask? So we start by setting all the values to 1. This makes sure that the full texture is white. Then we need the base mask. So the regular alpha values of the color variable. And then we use that mask and subtract it from this white texture. And when we do, all the white parts that we subtract by 1 will turn black because 1 minus 1 is 0 and 0 represents black. And all the white parts that we subtract with black will stay white. And last, but certainly not least, are all the partly transparent parts. For simplicity, let's say that those parts are 0 0.5. Now, when we subtract 0 0.5 from 1, then we still got 0 0.5. And that's exactly what we want. Because that's eventually what we're going to use for our outline. Cool, right? And now we understand how it works. Let's translate it into code. So like we just saw, we start with a white background. So we need to set all the fragments to 1. And then we subtract the alpha channel, which clips out all the parts inside of the necromancer. And the only thing that is left are these partly transparent borders we see over here. And the reason why we see our necromancer's colors and not simply black is because we use this logic inside the mix function. And inside the mix function, we know that 0 returns this value and 1 returns this value. All right, and now let's remove this part. And now all that's left to do is make sure that this argument becomes a zero when the progress is also zero. Because that will return the regular texture and that's what we want because then the outline will disappear. Try if you can do this on your own. So the simplest way to do it is simply type progress and then multiply this part. And lastly, make sure we use parentheses. So if we now slide our progress uniform, then we see that we can nicely fade in and out our outline. Cool, right? And with that, another task is done. And now before we continue with the last task, I promise to show you how to make it work in the case you're using a texture without partly transparent edges around the character. And we also get a similar problem when we set our filter mode to nearest. Because if we now set the progress to one, we see that we still have no outline left. So let's fix it. For this, we need to make small adjustments to our color silhouette. Let's replace the alpha value with the alpha value I created over here. And now we see we have a pretty decent outline. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close, don't you think? And I will not be explaining it in detail, but what it basically does is it scales up the character and then center aligns it back into place. This way, the red silhouette is slightly bigger than the original texture which results in a red outline. But let's remove it again. And set back the alpha of the color variable. And let's also reset the filter to linear. All right, now let's move on to the last task, which will allow us to simply pick and choose a color inside of the inspector panel instead of hard coding it inside of the shader itself. So let's start by adding a uniform at the top. We'll use a vector tree and we'll give the source color hint and a default color red. And now when we look inside the inspector panel, we see that we have a nice color picker over here. Now, first let's apply it to the shader. So let's copy it and let's replace this hard coded value. And if we now change the color in the inspector panel, we see that we can change the border in any color we like. I'm in a green vibe today, so let's keep it to green. And because I was bragging about doing this with one line of code, let's actually refactor it a bit. So always make sure that the lines do not exceed 80 characters. So for this, we chop off the OLOR from the color because C is a widely used abbreviation for color, so that's fine. Then let's place it inside of the vector, then copy the vector, and let's replace our 
dedicated variable like this. And if we now check the length, then you see it's nicely 79 characters. Pretty neat, right? And here you have them. If you like this video and you want to see more, then consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Also, do you want to master 2D shaders and create anything you can imagine? Then I also highly recommend to enroll in one of my courses, which you can find on godot2dshaders.com. The link is inside the description. And for now, thanks for watching, and like always, stay away from the light. Until next time.